Okay guys, I'm back and I promised that I'd show you how I made the vase. Now, uh, the things you'll need. Of course, the, the clay, that's a given. Uh, then, what I stuck it on the vase with, uh, first I, I put some gauze, you know, when you have an injury, you have this cotton gauze that you can, you know, put all around your injury. That's real cheap stuff. It's usually in one of those emergency little thingies, you know, that you put, have in the car or have at home. So they are really cheap. So I put that in Powertex, then I put it all around the vase. And I let that dry just a little bit because that is where all your flowers and little beads all adhere to. So that's important. So you do need Powertex. But I've seen, um, I've been online a lot. And I've seen some different sorts of power techs, you know, um, different names. So you'll have to just uh, Google it. I'm pretty sure you can uh, get uh, power techs all over the world because if you just Google, I've seen uh, Germany, Australia, I've seen the USA, I've seen a lot of countries. So you can just Google power techs and you'll find out where to get the stuff. And then at the end of this video, I'll show you a, a, a photo of all the stuff I've used with the names on it, everything. Okie dokie. Now, what I do to make the small little balls. I have something really small and you could use a straw or you could use a pipette. This is a pipette which I just cut off because I like the diameter of the thing. So then you just press it in there like that. And what I do while I'm talking to you guys and watching TV, I just roll it up like that and then get the next one. And this is really all I do. Um, I think if you're getting a little older, uh, your coordination of your hands left and right, you know, sometimes they sort of deteriorate. Doing this will really help, <laughs> I bet you because I'm pressing it with my dominant hand, my right hand, and then I'm rolling it up with my left. So both of my hands are doing something, and I think this is kind of cool. So now I've got six little bowls, and now we go to the next bit. So then I roll them round like that, and they don't have to really be totally round, just, you know, that there are no sharp bits on it. So I just roll that out. And then when I have them in a row, usually I'll make a 20 before I flatten them. So there you go. We have six little rolls. Then I line them up like that. And I press my, this ruler thing on top of it. Just press it down and then they're sort of flat and they won't roll away. Now, my husband, I bought this because I liked all those little little things. You know, this is a toolkit for in the garage. But this was $2.90. So this is really cheap. And look at all the different things you get. So what I'm using is the smallest. This is a really small sort of a Thing that I like to use in the middle of my little balls and there you have it that's it that's how I make those tiny ones so I'm gonna finish these off see that and sorry to tell you guys but this is so satisfying once you start doing this you can almost not stop because it's so much fun okay now they all have the little holes in them and then I put them on a piece of cardboard. And then uh, when the weather is right, I put them outside. And about mm, six hours later, you can use them. They will be a little bit soft, but not too soft not to use them. Okay, that's number one. I'm going to close this up. Now the bigger ones. What I was doing... See, what I do is I keep these because this is the thickness that I'm working with. So whatever you do, use these to uh, create the same thickness for everything. I think that's crucial. There you go. 
now. Now, why I'm using this is because now we have uniform size little beads. Now, if I were to use this, just doing a couple, now we have bigger beads. So it would be uh, really fun if you had more than, you know, a couple of sizes so that you can work on a sort of a pattern on the vase. Now, we turn them, we flatten them a little, and then, of course, you need a bigger bit to put in there because the, the small one, well, you could use the small one, but I like using just a little bit bigger one because these are a little bit bigger. So there it is. That's a different size and a different size hole, as you can see. So we put them aside, but I guess you're getting the idea that <clears throat> no matter, this is always the same, the thickness of the clay is always the same, and then depending on what you're going to use, this is a lipstick thing, this is a little cap of some sort of a hair product, this is from a uh, perfume mister, this is something I found laying around. And then, of course, you go to your bigger sizes. This is a cap off a hair product. This is from hairspray. This one is from a deodorant. This one is from hairspray. So as you can see, you can go all sizes with... All this material is already in your home, so it's going to be really, really cheap. So, next one. So I, what you do have to do is, if you have something big like this... You have to drill a little hole in the middle so that the air can escape. Otherwise, it won't work as as good as it as it should. So now we have a round one. Now, what I did, I'll show you. And this was the bit where it's so time consuming. So what I started to do was sort of make sure that it's nice and round, doesn't have any edges like that. Then I put a cross in the middle so I have a center. So right here, there you see the center. And then I started doing this. So just going around and around and around. And just keep going on. And not only once, but I went over it a couple of times because... Now don't stop. Don't think, okay, I'm done, that's too much work, because I'm going to give you a, a little hack how to do this really fast. So this is how I first started. And I was thinking, brother, this is a lot of work. This is going to take me like forever to get all these flowers. So there it is. See that? That's the flower, flowery thing that's on top of there. So... I thought, well, that's a lot of work. And uh, if I'm going to be doing more of these vases, i got to come up with something that's going to make this, you know, go very, very fast. So, what did I do? Make it flat. Okay. <clears throat> now, I take out another one. I made... A bigger one, see that? That's a big one. I made that with a hair dry or hairspray top. And then all you have to do is put your piece of clay, make sure you get the middle, like that, press it down a little bit, turn it around, and then just press. And it's ready! I'm going to show you guys. There you go. It already has everything in it. Now, that speeds it up a lot. Only, don't be lazy, because then I come in with my little stick. And just here and there, I'll, go, I'll give it a little push. Because that'll make sure that no one of these are the same. And that's sort of what you're, what you're going for. You don't want it all to be the same. So there it is. Now if I were to let this one dry outside, 
I would have another one to put the clay on and press on. So I'm going to keep this one. I'm going to put that one outside. Never know when this is going to be uh, broken or something like that. Now I'm going to get my smaller, the smaller one, and even smaller one like that. So depending on what you're going to use, <coughs> sorry guys, I'm, uh, I'm getting a cold. So depending on what you press in there, that's the, that sort of determines the size. So we're going to turn it around, push down a little bit, and there you go. Let me get you in really close. See if I can focus on that. Yep, there it goes. See that? Now, the bit is that I do like it when they are all different. So then I'll just give it one or two of those new little dents and then it's good to go. So we got all those and then of course we have the little mold which I had. Oh, I looked it up. This is also from the Powertex website and all you do with that is just a little bit of leftover clay. I make it into a little pointy thing then push it right in. There you go. Now because we're sticking them on a vase what you do want you want the flat back so that it'll glue. There it is. So we have those. We had the little ones. I'll show you the, the tiny one. This one. This is the same deal, guys. Just put the tiny one smack in the middle of the little mold you made. Turn it around. Press. Pull it up. And there you have it. Now, what I would do is make a couple of these, these press things. Because, you know, you want some... Um, you don't want them all the same, so I would make a couple of these and then, you know, use it. But then, my next phase. So, I made a new one. Look at that. This is really pretty. And I'm, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. See, to get this as a flower, I will first have to make um, a reverse one. If you know what I'm saying, guys. So, I'd have to be putting clay on top of it first, then letting that dry and use that as a mold. But I don't you just love that? I think that's so ocean themed. See you can't use it like this and some of those pieces might come out but I have to stick them in there anyway. Yeah see one came out. Well, I could use them, but you have the reverse, and what I like is the raised parts on it. So, now I have the reverse. When I let this dry, and I put clay back into it, then I'll get that. So, I hope you're understanding what I'm trying to say, guys. So, first you make something. If you want it exactly like that, then you have to make another one. You have to press that on. Let this dry, and then when you put your clay in there, you'll get <clears throat> an exact copy of this. So you have to go two steps. <clears throat> I'll have to just glue that back in because I, I made little holes where I put these little tiny things in. And you can let your imagination just, you know, go wild. Because you have so many possibilities. You could make little leaves. If you like it, you could do the little flowers. Let me see how this works. See, what I would need is a little sort of a rim around it to press the, uh, to press the, maybe I'll make a silicone mold. Who knows? Maybe I'll do that. And I could even just keep these out of there. That might be nice too. Get those 
bits in there. But now if I let this dry, I can press, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to let this one dry. So I can press the clay in there and I'll get this, this one. Okay. That's all it really was. So what you do is you go to a secondhand store, thrift shop, you get a vase you like, you only look at the, the model of the vase. So if you want to give yourself a break, go for a small one first, so you don't have to make so many. So a small vase, I would do something like that, you know, that's, uh, that's shape. Then you put, oh, I'll get that. Okay, so this is the PowerTex. Universal medium comes in a lot of colors. This one is the white one, as you can see here. Wit, blank, white, vice. So it has all languages on there. So I'm pretty sure you can buy it everywhere, guys. Just go Google it. Then that I put on the gauze. Now this is the stuff that, you know, they put around you when you're injured. So you put that in there in the PowerTex and then you put that around your vase. Now the Powertex is pretty sticky, so that will just, you know, sort of get around your vase and give you the base to put everything on. And it doesn't matter when if it dries because the next thing, what you need, you really need this stuff. Easy structure. Now this is fantastic stuff. This is, if you're going to work with clay, this is what you need, because this stuff, you know, it's, it, it gets hard, but not too hard. And it's a sort of a, I don't know, I, I, I can't come up with anything that is like this. And this is a kilo, way less expensive than any modeling paste for uh, painting. This is way cheaper. Um, so that's all you have to do. So you put this around your vase with the power ticks. You can even come in with the brush and brush on a little bit of this helps also. Then when that's all on there, what you really need, what you cannot do without, I'm telling you is this pin set. Whoops. This one. See how it's long and pointy. It's a long and pointy tweezers and I got them off AliExpress. I think they cost a buck. But this is so, you really need it, guys. I'll show you. So this is what I had left over. What I do is I put some of this structure, oops, this stuff, easy structure. I put it in a, a little flat bowl. Then I take my little bead. I press it in that stuff. Sometimes I put a little power text in there just to make it a little bit more flexible. Then I put it in there like that. And I take the vase and I stick it on there like that. Just so easy. That's how I do it. And then you just get the other one, put it in there. With the bigger ones, I put it on the back with a little palette knife and then stick it on. And also these, just put it on the back and stick it on. That'll work fine. So that's all you really need. It is the PowerTex. And you can get this in 500 milliliters. This is a liter, so you can go for half because you don't really need that much. But you do need this. And for the whole vase, I'll show you what I used. About 30 to 40 percent, because it's still, look at that. That's all I used, so it's, it's really not expensive. What was a real pain in the butt was getting this stuff because what they're selling you, see, this is different. They're stretching it. It'll work also, so don't worry, you can put that on too. But what you really want to go for is this stuff. And then they sold me this one in another shop, which is also elastic. See that? They sold me all kinds of stuff, and every time I, I kept saying, no, it's not the right one, it comes in something like this. It's called a gauze bande bandage. Oh, ba <laughs> I was going to, I was going to sort of do French bandage. Uh, gauze bandage. Yeah, that's it. That's all it really is. So, and again, 
when you really get into this stuff, you can do all sorts of really beautiful uh, effects with this. When you put it in power text, uh, I've seen a lot of people put this on paintings. You know, just put it in the power text, put it on the painting and just make these really beautiful wavy things. Okay, I'm talking too much. <clears throat> for the uh, for the color, this is the uh, turquoise. I'm not sure if you can pick it up. Yeah, you can pick it up. See how it goes turquoisey? It's an iridescent medium. So power power effect turquoise. This is it. Metallic pigment to mix with easy varnish or other art medium. You can use this in all mediums. And then they have this beautiful turquoise. So this is uh, a lot of fun to work with too. So this is really it guys. I'll put a photo on so that you can take your time and see exactly what it is. And I hope I inspired you guys to make something like this because these vases are beautiful. I don't think you can sell them because they took me about four days to make. So I'd have to ask like $800 or something. <laughs> I don't think people are going to pay me $800 for a vase. So I'll keep it for myself. But I had a really lot of fun making it. And I hope you do too. So thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. And tomorrow I think I'm, I might be doing pigments or something. But I'm not sure. So see you when I see you. Love you all to pieces. Bye-bye.